Hey guys, welcome to the next lecture. And today we will be doing a couple of questions of application of calculus only. So one is a maximization problem and another problem is also something related to calculus. Just wait for that. So let's first find the maximum value of the function x upon 1 plus 4x plus x squared. And the values are given. Mind you, you have to be particular in these kind of questions. Are they asking you where you are getting the maximum or are they asking you for the maximum value? In this question, I'm asking you maximum value. So you'll have to figure out where you're getting maximum and then what the value turns out to be of the function. So is it minus one by four, minus one by three, one by six, one by five, what it turns out to be. For that, it's a differentiable function. Let's just find out f dash x. That can probably help us. Recall the quotient rule. So in the denominator, in the denominator, the square of your denominator, denominator as it is in the numerator, derivative of the numerator, that is just one, minus numerator at as it is and derivative of the denominator, that's going to be four plus two x. Simplify this, we're getting one, just open it up, one plus four x plus x square minus four x minus two x square, whole thing upon one plus four x plus x square. So this turns out to be four x cancels with this four x and what you get here is one minus x square upon 1 plus 4x plus x square, right? Don't forget the square in the denominator, okay? I think I said the square in the denominator, but I did I forgot to write it. So it, it has to be the square in the denominator, okay? So what to do after this? Let's equate this to 0 for Figuring out the stationary point where you can get maximum minima, let's just equate it to zero. This implies one minus x squared is equal to zero. This implies x could be equal to plus or minus one. Plus or minus one, both are the values where you can fetch your maximum. Now, when you get a maximum, what happens? The function increases and then decreases. When you have a when you get a minimum, why are you getting it? Because the first the function must have decreased and then increased, right? So let's look around. Let's look around these points. So you have minus one, say here, zero here, one here, say two here, and minus two here. So let's look around what's happening around minus one and one. Let's look for the sign of f dash x. So when you take any value which is lesser than minus one, any value which is lesser than minus one, if you take that, what's gonna happen to your f dash x? f dash x, the denominator is positive only. So positive, negative, f dash x is positive or negative depends on the numerator. So one minus x squared, would it be negative or positive? So 1 minus x square will be negative here. That's because your x square will be bigger. Out here, x square will be smaller. If you take a fraction between minus 1 and 0, your x square will be smaller than 1. So therefore, this will be positive. So f dash x is negative and then positive. That means the function is decreasing. And then increasing. That means you will get a min here. So at minus 1, you should be getting min. Let's see what's happening at 1. So if it's a fraction between 0 to 1, 1 minus x square will be positive. That means the function is increasing here. And between 1 and 2, your x square will be bigger than 1. So you will get a negative f dash x. That means your function is decreasing here and that's where you will get a maximum. So clearly at 1, at 1, we get 
a max. Now, what's the value of the function at one? You will have to figure it out. What is f of one? f of one is one upon one plus one, plus one plus four plus one. So it is one upon one plus four plus one. That is one upon six. And that is in one of our options. Yes, C is definitely the correct option. Now a little tougher question. The next question I want to discuss, it's, it's not tougher if you know the concept. If you do not, if you can't recall the concept, then maybe it is tough. So integral zero to x ft dt is equal to x square sine x plus x cube. Then f of pi, f at pi is pi by two square plus pi by two cube. Is it pi plus three pi by uh, three pi square by four? Is it pi minus three pi square by four? Or is it zero? Okay, so let's figure it out. But how? What do I do to figure this out? I need f pi by two. So I need we need fx. How? Do you remember? I've discussed this before. Integral and derivative. And dy by dx. They are inverse of each other or entire of each other. So if I differentiate an integral I should be getting back the function itself. If I'm integrating, if I'm differentiating integral of some function, then because derivative and integral, they're entire of each other, recall Leibniz rule, okay? The fundamental theorem of calculus or the Leibniz rule. So what we will do, we will differentiate on both the sides. Differentiate on both sides. As you do that, that means what you're doing is dy by dx of integral 0 to x, ft dt, right? That's what we're doing. And on the other side, also we have to differentiate the function given to us there, which is x square sine x, x square sine x plus x cube plus x cube. So when you will differentiate this integral, what will you get? You will actually just end up with fx. This is Leibniz rule. You should actually go back and recall, revise what is Leibniz rule. So basically you are differentiating an integral and this integral, for this integral, one of the bounds is zero, which is a constant. So it's like in your head, just Think about the logic behind the Leibniz rule. So it's like you integrate this term, whatever this term will be. When you will integrate, you will get, you will have to put the bounds. So you will have, say, after integrating, you're getting capital F, okay? So after integrating, you are getting capital F, but you will have to put the bounds. So you will get capital Fx minus capital uh, Fx minus capital F at zero, right? Now, whatever would be capital F, whatever function it would be, when you will put the value zero, you will just get a constant, right? Now, imagine that you have to now differentiate this. This is just, I am just trying to give you a recap. If you're differentiating this term, so you, the, this was capital Fx was the integral of lowercase f, right? So when you will be differentiating it, you will get the lowercase f only, right? So after differentiating this capital F, you will get lowercase f, right? But f0 is just a number. When you differentiate a number, you get 0, right? So from here, you will just end up with fx. That's just a mental maths for you, okay? And that's the logic behind Leibniz rule. Then you can have different permutations about it. So from here, you will just have fx. And from here, you will be differentiating this. So use the product rule first, guys. So you have x squared cos x plus sine x into 2x plus 3x squared. So you get x squared cos x plus 2x 
sin x plus 3x square, which means that f at pi by 2, that's what we, want, we have to figure out, right? f at pi by 2 will be equal to pi by 2 square cos at pi by 2, which is 0, plus 2 pi by 2 sine pi by 2, which is 1, plus 3 pi by 2 square. So, well, this is 0. So, this term goes off. And from here, you get pi plus 3 times pi square by 4. Do we have this option? Yes. B is the correct option, guys. Thank you very much. I hope this helps in revising.